This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 631 Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professional wrestling here. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we got a hell of a night lined up for you guys. A bunch of people out on the Facebook Live over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. But with us, first of all, we have from deep, deep on the other side of Pittsburgh and Monroeville uh, is... In, in Zombie Town, it is kind of Zombie, zombie town, town, isn't it? Piano. Yeah, Zombie Town. It is the Riz. It is the Riz. Hi, Sword. Hi, Riz plays games. I'm. I'm uh, it's two weeks in a row now. Yeah, yeah. It's good to have you. This it's almost amazing. like you're a regular co-host again. Yes. <laughs> uh, Maybe soon I'll be even. I'll even be in the studio if the. Uh, one if day. the tunnels ever work. One day. T- 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 yeah, those tunnels get tricky, don't they? <laughs> also <laughs> with us, he is from Floodtown, USA, Bronxtown, PA. He is Bobby Bronx FJ Bronx. Town. Hi, everybody. I just want to say that contrary to popular belief, uh, Puppet FJ Town and, and uh, Smarky here are still alive. Oh, that's good. That's good. If yeah. you saw the uh, intermission, IWC intermission Sweet. video... Uh, yeah. from a couple of weeks ago um, on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, he took a super kick from Chris LaRusso. We talked a little bit about it on Gold here. We interviewed the puppet, got an update, and yeah. uh, we're happy. Justice for Smarky. Uh, thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and, thoughts and prayers. Justice for Smarky. So so there's that. Um, also with us, I accidentally switched them, but we got, we got, a, we got a, a dynamic duo here in the studio, first of all, since I already gave you guys a glimpse. Lady Frost is joining us here. Hello, fresh Liz. off your trip. Hello. <laughs> of course, you've been on the Indie Mayhem Show. This is your first venture with us on the regular Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is. Oh boy. Oh. We're sorry. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> also with us. Also, you guys are fresh off of traveling. I can't wait to talk a little bit about that here on the Indie Mayhem Show. But the Savage Gentleman himself. Victor Benjamin is with us tonight in the flesh, and I'm very excited because you former MMA, right? And there's a lot of MMA people in the wrestling news and world this week. Really? Yeah, I understand. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard. You haven't heard? I haven't. <laughs> Maybe no. we'll enlighten you a little bit here in the show. Of course, the two of them are going to be appearing for uh, Blackcraft Wrestling here in town. That's going to be on iPay Pay Per View, the premiere event. I want to talk about you talk with you guys a little bit about it here. Uh, later in the show but in the meantime thank you everybody for tuning in this is the wrestling mayhem show you can check us out at wrestling mayhem you can hit up our facebook page where uh, we go live every tuesday at 9 p.m eastern time um and uh you can us up at mayhem show on the twitter uh you can also as i'm trying to bring my notes up in the proper place can they email us uh, you can email us at that email address Good times at WrestlingMamShow.com and 412-206-WMS0. Also, up the Wrestling Mam Show Facebook group where a lot of great conversation has been happening this past week, especially as react to, as people react to things like uh, SummerSlam uh, this week. And, of course, thank you to our streaming partners, the405media.com that carries us every night at 9 p.m. Pacific Time, midnight Eastern, so you can go to sleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem. And please subscribe to us wherever you uh, like to listen to your podcasts or in video form on YouTube and Facebook. Like, like, share, review. However, get the word out if you like the conversations we're having on here. And if you really like it, we do appreciate it if you support us on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show our friends on the fan of the show one dollar level Bo diggity Woo! ed burke tina keys bobby fj town 
Who's that? But in the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Experiment. And at the Pocky Club $5 level, you guys have been getting a little bit of extra stuff lately, including the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, including some uh, lenses. Um, that's their Instagram story type thing over on the Patreon, having a lot of fun with that. Uh, our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling, Power to Smarks on Twitter, and Christopher Bishop, Bradley Ruthers, Heel Bradley, Doc Remedy, and Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. And our friends at the Pizza Club $10 level, they get special uh, state of the show deals uh, is our good friend billy johnson and uh i'll give a shout out to billy a little later in the show when we do a spot but he did something uh, kind of fun this past <laughs> weekend for us i so really appreciate seeing uh and if you contribute to the show eventually we'll get riz a cough button as we can hear there on the uh, audio podcast uh <laughs> <laughs> and you guys literally help keep the lights on for us. Thank you so much to the people. I that, get something in return? Come on, <laughs> that you uh, support the show and literally help us keep the lights on. You can, too, at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. So there was a little bit of wrestling this weekend. It was Just SummerSlam weekend. It was the plus whatever indie shows you guys went to uh, yeah. out there and in here. Uh, but anyways, uh, well, let's, let's start at the top with SummerSlam. And I do want to talk a little bit about it. Is, it is a very MMA-centric show. We got Brock Lesnar. We got Ronda Rousey. Um, and I wanted to talk with, with uh, Victor here uh, about, as, as a former MMA guy, um, ha, what, what's it like kind of seeing those worlds collide? And I guess it's been happening for a while, but like, two of them on one show in SummerSlam, something like this. I mean, it was inevitable. Two sports are so very similar. It's just like the McGregor and Mayweather match. In Lady. reference to, to boxing and... And MMA. Right. I mean, they're all fight-heavy sports. You have athletes and performers, mm -hmm. and even in MMA, there are performers at the end of the day. They have to market. They have to be marketable. Mm -hmm. So you have two really huge stars that are great on television and great at what they do, um, and at the end of the day, they're entertainers, and they're damn good at it. Uh, I think it's been interesting because, I mean, uh, we've had a lot of conversations, and I've seen a lot of both with Ronda Rousey, who, of course, you know, Brock Lesnar was a – Amateur wrestler, then pro wrestler, then UFC, then I think he was football in there too, and then back to wrestling. Right. Like Ronda's kind of she's doing the crossover thing right now, like kind of what you did uh, several years ago, right? Right. And um and I think is fairly, I think still young in her training and wrestling knowledge, right? Yes. Um, can you speak a little bit to like that transition? What is that like going from like a uh, mixed martial arts to like a wrestling training like that that she could be going through right now? Uh, as similar as the sports are, it's so very different. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. It's definitely not the same training. Uh, your body's used to taking a beating, but usually it's in a completely different area. You know, as many bumps as you take being a pro wrestler, it sucks. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not getting punched in the face anymore. That's and right. So that's a huge plus. Uh, well, my nephew wanted to transition from amateur wrestling to MMA in like high school. I think his mom, his mom said, why do you want to get punched in the face on purpose? <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of the same, the same thought process there, right? Pretty much. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, but anyways, um, no big shows this past weekend. And, uh, we talked a little bit on, on raw wrap up since apparently if you were in the UFC, you see, you're only allowed to be on Monday night raw, I guess at this <laughs> point, it would be fun if they threw Ronda on SmackDown. It's the red color. It's the red color. It's the red color. <laughs> That's true. Color. Branding. Yeah, exactly. Especially some of those Brock Lesnar matches have been pretty. A uh, little, little red. Little red. Little, little red, red recently. Um, but I, I, everybody's hard on Ronda. Like, like I, there was a discussion. Like they, they were saying that there was a there was a, a thing came up in one of our chats or one of our uh, Facebook groups about her kind of botching, and I'm, I, I don't think she's botching. They're per, they're. Per, they're, what is she botching? I don't think she's botching anything at this point. She's an athlete. It's real. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really hard to be in front of that many eyes and they're mainly focused on you. They're mm -hmm. not focused on, you know, the opener, the dark matches, the pre-shows. She is who everyone wants to pay attention to right now. So you're going to watch her more closely. And people are obviously going to be hard on all of the athletes, but her especially because, you know, she's getting a big push right now. Mm -hmm. And... I she's don't care. The champ. Yeah, I don't care what anyone says. I mean, she's she's doing a stand up job for That's sure. Awesome. 
Thank you, Ronda Rousey, for giving us the most media attention that pro wrestling is ever going to receive right now. Absolutely. And positive versus what Brock Lesnar is maybe doing right now. Right. (laughs) So, I read something online about uh, how everybody's like quick to judge her and stuff like that about as far as like them putting her in the forefront. But like somebody said online, like she was the reason why women's sports are getting like a big push because yes. like what she did in UFC, mm-hmm. you know, like there probably wouldn't be a WWE's women's evolution without her in some way as well. Like carrying the torch in MMA. She's Absolutely. Part of, she's a big, yeah. big part of the women's revolution in general and life and yeah. sports. I mean, she's the reason, one of the reasons this is happening. Mm-hmm. A sport and a company, the size and the, the hype of the UFC Ronda Rousey had a division created specifically for her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one has ever done that. And that's right because she's I, transcending. Cool. UFC wasn't UFC very quick to not have a women's division. Like, they hated like, it. They hated like Dana White was like wholly Anti. against the idea. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Much like and you know you hear about you know the old you know people behind wrestling. Kind of, I hear about indie promoters, and I think we've had, yeah. may have had this conversation too. I know we have several times with, with women we've had on the Indie Mayhem show about like just promoters not taking women's wrestling. It's just a spot on the show. It's attraction for being women mm-hmm. in the ring, like kind of period. Right. right. So it's the seat filler match. Exactly. Um, and and between you know, there's, there's this interesting thing that's happening where these, you know, there was a discussion about like. You know, if it wasn't for, even though that era wasn't what everybody wanted it to be, including the people in that era, like uh, Beth Phoenix and, and Natalia had this conversation of like, if they weren't there doing their thing, this thing wouldn't be happening now. You also know? true. Like them there in the, you know, I guess the Barbie diva era, you can call it a little mm-hmm. bit, right? Right. Um, and then, yeah, Rhonda's definitely a part of it. I think it's again people are so hard on like ronda being like oh it's just like brock lesnar for the women's division mm. but it's brock lesnar for the women's division <laughs> yeah like that's actually something we should probably be excited about and right here's the uh, thing, i don't people... want to say it's brock lesnar because of the women's division no 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 no, no, no but no, no, like, like, she, like her promo last night was needed mm-hmm. after what happened with brock lesnar yeah yeah I was, it... she had to come out there and and tell everybody hey with she said it with one line that she isn't brock lesnar mm-hmm. she's going to be like and now she has to prove she has to be out there every day she has to be she has to travel she has to do shows she has to do everything that that all these other all the other women wrestlers have to do she's doing house shows right I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, at least, some of them. At least yeah. like big ones. Distance least... himself, distance Brock Lesnar doesn't do TV every week. Um, Brock Lesnar is what's going to make her not Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And make her a better champion. And make her what a lot of people thought she, was, she wasn't going to be. Mm-hmm. You're going to say? Uh, I think I lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, <laughs> let, let's be honest here. She is the best female athlete in the world today. Mm-hmm. I agree. With I you. think bar we, one hands down. We have this conversation all the time that some people come in and they don't need to spend 16 years of their life in locker rooms and doing mm. the drives. Like she already mm-hmm. spent that time creating and branding herself into an incredible athlete. Mm-hmm. She spent all of those hours in the gym. It, was, it wasn't it was in pro wrestling rings, but it was in the, the MMA cage. Mm-hmm. And just because she yep. transferred over and people think, oh, well, she didn't pay her dues and she didn't do this. She's a freaking mega star. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. We're in an entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry she didn't wrestle since she was four years old. But a star is a star, and that's why Brock Lesnar is a star. And that's why we're sitting here talking about Brock Lesnar and we're talking about Ronda Rousey. That's the point, so right? Like, she was too busy getting ready for the Olympics, yeah, which right. is the, probably right. even less forgiving. Yes. Than, yes, oh, than absolutely. So. The training in, that she went through is probably tenfold tougher than what she would have went through training at 16 or 17 to become a pro wrestler, mm-hmm. we'll say. And thankful that she's been doing movies, so that probably that probably helps lend into her presence being because right. I mean she's still better than you know 
women you see the first time on NXT. Right. right. Oh, like matches. a lot of times. By leaps and bounds. Yeah. And so. it takes experience. Everyone knows you you can't ever know and understand what that feeling is like under pressure in front of all those cameras, having to remember lines or speaking from the heart, whatever it is. There's nothing like experience. So, you know, she's going to have that learning curve a little bit where it's going to take a little time. It's not like she's brand new. But at the mm. same time, you know, she didn't have all the indie years in front of, you know, 50, 60 fans that she could say whatever she wanted and like see what what worked. Um, Alex Carr is our friend out in California. Uh, he he has a comment on here. He, and, and, you know, correct him if he's wrong here. But he thinks one of the other big differences between MMA and pro wrestling is going from uh, shorter shorter time intervals like three to five minute rounds to a longer more sustained period of time for a wrestling match is that does that ring true for you in your your mind victor no actually not at all mm -hmm. you're trained to compete for rounds on end as a mixed martial arts fighter because it can go three, a lot longer than a typical wrestling match mm -hmm. yeah if you go to distance uh yeah i mean you can go 25 minutes for yeah. a championship fight yeah which majority of most wrestling matches are 10 15 max and, and in the mma world I, I know we get excited about the knockouts and everything like that for, but majority they kind of usually go the distance majority of them mm -hmm. yeah because you have two equally trained combat athletes and they're trying to best each other they're not just going out trying to you know trying to swing for the fences they're being calculated they're taking risk but at the same time they're smart and they're trained there's no way that you can just put a wrestler cm punk in an octagon, <laughs> and he do the same thing that Ronda Rousey has done for WWE. That, that, that thing still blows my mind because it makes sense for like a Brock or somebody. Somebody that has like a actual combat sport, definitely right. including mm -hmm. amateur wrestling, right? And uh, I mean, hell, those are the guys that usually do usually the better in 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 MMA, if I'm not mistaken. Um, to somebody who just like I've been a pro wrestler for right. forty. Well, what most people don't understand is that CM Punk actually was a high ranking. Uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu player. Okay. But I think it might have been Hoist Gracie that said, you punch a black belt, he's a brown belt. Punch him in the face again, he's a purple belt. You keep punching him, that black belt just turned into a white belt. Mm -hmm. you, you're you not grabbing arms and legs and limbs, unless you're Ronda Rousey, you know, while you're getting punched in the face. And that's what happened to CM Punk. Just not, it, it wasn't as advantageous of an experience going into it. The name sounded really good on a poster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But you know, hey, hey, he, him, and UFC cashed in on it. Absolutely. Regardless, even if that was a, a so did Chicago. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the second the second fight before, I don't know if he got fired, but you know, it was talked about. Yeah. Uh, and there was, I mean, to the, they did a documentary on him, so that was again money more power for to him. You yeah. know, right? He capitalized. And there's there's been a lot of seminars like we've been trying to better ourselves and get as much knowledge as possible. And so many people really boil it down to money. And it's terrible to say, I mean, success to us, I think is happiness, at least me, but you have to have a desire to make money. And whatever that is, you know, aside from selling your soul and doing really terrible things, um, you know, you should want to create revenue for your talent, your skill, your art. I mean, this is why we do this. Mm -hmm. If we just wanted to do this every day for $20, then, you know. Speaking of <laughs> mixed martial arts, UFC, WWE, Matt Riddle. We oh, just yeah. watched an interview mm -hmm. speaking on, he was literally in tears yeah. because he no he longer had to cut grass, shovel snow. He got to do what he loves, wrestling. Not MMA, he was great. But the fans didn't appreciate him. Mm -hmm. UFC didn't appreciate him. Mm -hmm. But now he's in a place where he's adored, and he actually gets to excel and use his athleticism and his quirkiness. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's awesome. He was a great teacher. We did a seminar with him, and he was. I think we talked about that last time. Um, he was just. He was awesome. He was down to earth. <laughs> he, you know, treated us like bros. <laughs> but, Bro. <laughs> Bro. See, a lot of us were talking about at takeover they did the you know the shot of him and how uh, he just seemed so excited like people are usually like happy to be there they just got signed right like we've seen this like since takeovers began but like he just looked like i was front row and just got yeah. like at one point he, he we, we, we caught out that he looked up at the at the screen to see himself on the screen right. and got more excited right he was probably that pumped i believe that it was 100 percent authentic he, was, yeah, he, he did it to quote elvis he did it my way 
<laughs> there, there's that one story of him where Triple H said, I'm proud of you. And he's like, I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's why he wasn't signed the first time around. But Probably. Now it's fine. <laughs> No, I'm proud of you. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, speaking of the women's uh, uh, kind of representation, of course, I, I think as we're seeing on Raw, um, uh, Ronda is definitely, when I say she's the Brock Lesnar of this, she's uh, she's going to weigh heavily in the, the Evolution women's pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. I mean, Absolutely. she is. There's nobody. Yeah. Alexa Bliss has been on top of the mountain for how long? Her and Charlotte Flair. What happened? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A couple judo tosses, a little cat and mouse. She played games with her. Mm. That's real life. <laughs> that, that's what would happen. It's hard, right. Yeah, it's hard to stack You up. can't fake that. Mm-hmm. You know, those throws were real. I, I, at one point watching that match, it was... Um, so basically we have... What, a, painful? A, it was, yeah, that. <laughs> there, this, we're basically watching a, a... What would happen if a uh, champion MMA star would fight a gymnast? Because that's what we got. We go, she yeah. is like because yeah. uh, Alexa is a uh, gymnast. And... Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Frost took least, a little offense of that you're right. one. I have a little additional training because I'm married to a mixed martial artist. Well, there you so. go. It all comes together. You would have fared <laughs> a little both, better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, even to the no. fact where she's trying to get grab her and she's like doing a backflip away from her, right? Yeah. Mm. I was just like, Gymnast versus MMA. Like, basically, that's what we were getting. Um, and they had fun with it, and they told a story with it. And I think it was pretty good as far as that goes. You know, you can only do, you know, we saw this with Brock for the longest time. Like, you, you still have to represent them as, like, they are a badass, and you can't, uh, you got to do a match a certain way, don't you? Absolutely. At that point, mm-hmm. with somebody yeah. that, that comes in on that level. You yeah. can't discredit someone's natural talents and abilities. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Something they've been trained to do for their whole life. Predominantly their entire adult life. Mm-hmm. Can't take that away from somebody. Well, I'm sure she's happy to see that she's taking on Trish Stratus at Evolution, uh, Alexa Bliss. Um, yeah. That is a, I think that's a pretty good cross generational dream match. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. I would, I would also love to see anybody versus Lita if she decides. I don't know. I think she had an, she had her neck injury, so I think that's why she's not yeah. wrestling, right? Right. But um, she might though. She could. I've heard, there's, there's rumors that I can't remember who they wanted her to fight though. But they mean, said Lita is rumored for a match. Oscar maybe. Oh jeez. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was the epic. There's the match I didn't even know I, I think... wanted. Yeah, right. Yeah. Until you've heard it. You're just like, yeah, now now I'm just like, yeah, that, that was like pineapple good. on a pizza. <laughs> See, that's just a no. I do not want fruit on my car. It's up for debate. <laughs> Thank you. Well, could you imagine putting strawberries in your mashed potatoes? It just doesn't make that sense. That actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Well, I can't back off from that segue to our, our uh, good friends at Slice on Broadway. <laughs> You're right. Uh, supporting wow. Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. I don't know if that's officially my next sponsor I'm supposed that? to read, but that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they'll do that. Nice Will they do that? I have seen these guys dough. make a Hello Kitty dough doll, dough doll. for <laughs> Dutter's birthday. These All people... Right. Like if you look back on the Instagram, they're making like 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 football goal posts and things and little like these guys are pizza artists. So they're the cake boss of the pizza world. They're the cake boss. They're the pizza boss. Pizza boss of their own world. And they're right up and they're right up the street here. If you guys come to Pittsburgh, please go check them out. If you're coming into town like Alex Miller is, he's going to the North Shore. That's where Slice and Broadway is at PNC Park, one of their oh, four fine locations. I just noticed four. that. Congratulations. Yes, yes. and also I know his I know his Patreon or Pizza Club. He was he was joining. He was well into the Pizza Club because Billy Johnson uh, gave us a picture of him uh, pointing WrestleMania sign style mm-hmm. to the uh, slice on Broadway because they do have a pretty nice sign down there at PNC Park. Oh, uh, but uh, thank you so much P- uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepper and pizza. Our good friends, slice on Broadway, door down. Uh, sorry, I mixed two sentences in one thing. Uh, SliceonBroadway.com. <laughs> Don't kick the door down, Dave Podner. Um, and, and thank you, Billy, for also not kicking the door down. Let them know the Mayhem Wait. Show sent you. If somebody's at the door, just knock. Yeah, just knock. Yeah. You don't have to knock. Just open the door. It's, it's open. usually if it's, if it's open, if it's business if it's hours, yeah, yeah. you'll be like, Don't, hi, Mayhem sent me. I'd no like breaking some. and entering. It's not breaking. 
<laughs> Check them out. Four locations. Carnegie right here in Beachview and over on the East End and, of course, PNC Park. And uh, and thank you. I wonder, if, I wonder if CM Punk had some slice on Broadway. Maybe he was in town while the Cubbies were in town again. I know he's been up here before. Yeah. With uh, Colt. Not that those guys are hanging out these days. Oh. oh. That's a sensitive subject. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of uh, yeah. Um, anyways, next. 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 What else happened this weekend? Takeover. Did you guys get a chance to check out Takeover? I know you guys were doing a lot of traveling. We did. We you did, did catch up. You did. It okay. was absolutely we got the network. incredible. We do. We have the network. So, so what? What? Uh, what was the big highlight for you the, for Saturday night? Was it the first match? Absolutely. It was, a tag match. It was tag it. Match. We were done. I was like, I. I feel like I, I'm like emotionally <laughs> tapped right now. I could be good. That that was you know a whole show's worth of entertainment and um depth for me mm-hmm. just... at not one point did we take our eyes off the match mm-hmm. or feel okay this is going too long i think it went almost 25 minutes and i think yeah. this was mustache mm-hmm. mountain against uh, um the uh, undisputed era undisputed yeah era. of uh strong and o'reilly yep um and, and this is and i love the story going into this because I, I watched the match uh, i was catching up on, on nxt i basically just watched a month of nxt at a time because that's basically a monday night um yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is also helpful but um but but you know they, they did the throw in the towel thing which they played up a little bit in this match too i liked um, it yeah it, it brought an element of realness to it mm-hmm. you know you also have Kyle O'Reilly, who has a legitimate background as well. And mm-hmm. you throw the towel in, which comes from real sports. Mm-hmm. You know, wrestling is a real sport as much as people try to discredit it. Uh, C- Carter in the chat room is calling for Adam Cole versus Ricochet. Oh, that, that was his match uh, of the I year. Think, I, I, think, I think that was a um, holy crap moment of the night. Super that kick, kick. backflip. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it was like it was GIF worthy or GIF worthy, whatever you say. It's it's actually GIF, GIF I believe. I say GIF, GIF. but it's GIF. GIF. Um, GIF. If so, okay, this is a this is a discussion <laughs> this for is another. This I is know, a discussion for the awesome cast, but I believe awesome the creator is, uh, says GIF. Yes. No, but... it's the, creator, yeah. the creator's an idiot. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> there, there we go, Bobby with eight. Oh, but but, but anyways, but the point is, it was a GIF worthy. <laughs> Match for sure. <laughs> I think as a whole, though, I'm gonna have to go with the tag opener because Absolutely. just the way that it was constructed and the way that it flowed, it was. I don't know. You. you it really, was a roller coaster ride to the top. It was how it was supposed to be. It was up I and think down and up and down and up and down, down then way, way up. up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I love Ricochet. I'm a fan, and it's funny because. Um, Shane actually looked at me and he said, how many times do you think he heard people tell him he's doing it wrong? Mm -hmm. Because he is so different and he is so extreme and you hear so many of the old timers just bad mouthing him. But he is a different product and I understand maybe you cannot do that into your 50s, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have an element and that he can't evolve because that's the point of this. You need to evolve to stay current. Mm -hmm. But I think that he is so, so, so very good at what he does that it's hard for anyone, I think, at this point to say, oh, you know, this flippy guy doing dives and, you know, discredit that because that in itself is an art. And there's there's room for new things here in the business. So and it, it, it sticks out because he, he's not just like another flippy guy, like he's doing it with a certain style yes. that nobody else is bringing because everybody's kind of just pulling it off. And maybe just adding it, like he's do. I, I've had a, a, the fortune to see him uh, do do a match or two in person, and it, it like that is a whole other animal to see that, um, and and very close, um, in in a small setting, um, and 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 I think back to times where there's a lot of guys on the NXT roster that I've heard back before NXT was a thing. Like they were getting the looks. Some guys that were in the main event of NXT Takeover this past weekend, um, you know, talking about the things that they were being told as mm-hmm. they're going and getting the looks, and you know, the equivalent of what we see now when people go down the performance center, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you know, they're getting dark matches and things, and and the stuff they're being told, and them saying those guys just they just don't get this. Like the old the old heads not getting what a Johnny Gargano was trying to do. You right. know, uh, what eight years ago, or things mm-hmm. like that. These guys that were killing it in Cleveland and Pittsburgh and Evolve and things like that until you get something like one of the big things this week was uh, Triple H talking about how we are watching the indies. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's how Matt Riddle happened. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and Mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting. So, I mean, they have to, that's, that's where their product still comes from. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. wrestlers are wrestlers. You can't just pick all football people and UFC athletes and, you know, but it would, you know, that they're buying up different companies or there are rumors. So of course they have to watch the talent. Uh, Justin in the chat room is also calling for, uh, he's, he's saying Cole and Ricochet was good, but to me, the match of the night has to go with that NXT tag title match, which, uh, which you guys agree with, of course. Um, Alex Miller Ricochet jumping over the top rope like it was nothing. It's just incredible. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Tim Hor- Harshman says old heads rule. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, I we're love, a fan. We, we are, are a fan. Everything, man. We love we love old traditional classic. That's what we're actually built upon. But we my thing is the gimmick. Yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. But I think that there's always room for someone that is so extremely talented in that one craft that they have, like Ricochet, mm-hmm. that other people are trying to imitate him. That there are flippy guys because of people like Ricochet, because he is the best. And that's that's his style. It's not just, I'm going to throw this in here and throw this in here. That's how he genuinely wrestles. And that's just, that's okay. Because in the world of flavors of ice cream, mm-hmm. he's a different flavor of ice cream. And maybe you don't like Pop Rocks, Rainbow, whatever. And not <laughs> everyone's going to be vanilla. You know, I'm, I'm some vanilla, but I'll take the Pop Rocks. You know, you know I, I prefer chocolate. <laughs> But it goes to say, same thing. They just signed Matt Riddle. How many people were completely against UFC transitioning into wrestling? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People were so against it. There were very few to do it. Uh, you know, in the early days, you had Shamrock, Severin, you know, and a couple guys that tried their hand in it. But it wasn't a thing. It wasn't what people wanted in wrestling. Mm-hmm. But guess what? It's, it's the new flavor now. of ice cream. Yeah. Uh, t- kind of to that old school um, uh, thing. I think the interesting thing is, and I'm seeing this in conversations with people uh, in the indies, with locally and, and online and on the Facebook. Like there seems to be, you know, even the people that you may even look as like flippy new age indie wrestler kind of things are still having conversations and appreciations for the old school, even if old school now means like the nineties. Uh, but, but still like they're, they looking, understand, it. they understand yeah. that and they're seeing that. And there's a lot of the character stuff and, and like, you know, hearing somebody who is a year into the game, you know, talking about a Harley race match, yes. you know, is, is incredible. And I love that that is happening. And I think there's certain things like, um, I, I, you know, the little bit of experience I have with brutal Bob Evans, like and yes. ev- in here and what everybody else's experiences from his seminars, mm-hmm. like he's definitely, Definitely that mix of the old school minded mm-hmm. and telling a story and, and everything and, and a lot a lot of fun to watch his matches too. You know, mm-hmm. so like that I, I think it's I don't know if it's just because everybody can see everything, like this WWE network era. You're mm-hmm. not just like doing this stuff because you see it on the indies. Right. Mm-hmm. Plus I think we did have a bad era where everybody watched backyard wrestling. Um oh. so oh. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, so. whoa, whoa, not everybody. <laughs> right, Bobby? I know I know Bobby, you wanted to, you know, get hit in the head with a flaming stick and then get hit by a car. Nope. Nope. No, <laughs> thank you. Nope. Thank nope. you. Yep. Oh, fast. That video I'm soft. <laughs> I'm soft like marshmallow. <laughs> There's a video that Alex Carr has put on the Facebook group. This was just almost. I haven't shown it to everybody because it's so stupid. Uh, he gets hit by a car. Oh, I'm sorry. A fast car too. It a wasn't very slow at fast all. car. I don't know. I hope this guy was a stuntman. But if he was a hey, stuntman, no, they checked on him. They I, did check on him. They did check on him. <laughs> Wow. We got the, the We're going to have to watch this video a now. Referee. A not wrestling video. <laughs> a, a non it's wrestling. Very not wrestling. No, it's like, so I've been, you know, I've been kind of re- sharing things on my Is Facebook. it comparable to Talladega Nights? Um, was know. he screaming, help me, Tom Cruise? No, he was not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no? no? No, I think there was, actually, no, you know, I have not the watched it. The fire went out pretty quickly. Yeah, the fire went out pretty quickly, yeah. but I did not watch it with sound on. Oh, <laughs> at my. all. Because I don't think you need to. I'm right. Am I no, the, the fire, the fire was the was live even, viewers? Live viewers, am I the only one that watches all of these Facebook videos without sound because it drives Victor crazy? No, I do, freak. I do, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> He's like, turn the sound on. I'm like, no, I don't need to. And it probably has some ridiculous. You have, music. you need the sound to enjoy it fully to 
its capacity. Um, because normally it's like two in the morning when you're trying to go to sleep and yeah, you're scrolling and there's yeah. just stupid there, there, things. There's, um, um, I, uh, and, 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 and producer Missy went recently to a Facebook event here in the city. And I know I saw the stat within the last week. And it's something like 85% of people do not watch the videos on Facebook yes. with sound on. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm in the minority. No, you are in the minority. The minority. Wait. The sound is there for a reason. We have multiple senses for a purpose. Yes, yes. Use them all. What was that, Riz? What was that, Riz? This is going in the awesome cast, but I believe Facebook was trying to change that because as I was watching, as I was scrolling, I keep on hearing weird noises, and it's from the videos that I'm not even clicking on. Yeah, there's probably something going going on, too. I mean, that's probably a setting for you. You know, we're allowed to cross this over, because Table for Three this week was all about Twitter. <laughs> and and you too. It was great. It was okay. It was, here's another one because you. And by you the way, by the way we're we're stopping Chris, right here. Chris, you should watch that table for three. <laughs> oh, oh, no, was that? <laughs> go ahead. You say the Twitter. Is it the Twitter or is it Twitter? Listen, I'm from back in the day when we used to just talk about our sandwiches. <laughs> it's the Twitter. <laughs> it's the so Twitter. You, do, do you, you refer to it as the interwebs? Yes. Do you say K Mark? Also, Kmart. <laughs> Are you one of those people? We're talking about Kmart. Yeah, right. Do you say Kmart? Is this a is this a Pittsburgh? <laughs> it thing? might be a Pittsburgh. I, thing. I've never. <laughs> Look, Miss <laughs> Eleven. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean. Thing. I'm not, but like, but your relatives like, are. No, my relatives. She just are. called you out. Yes. No, no, no. no. I'm, do they say Kmart? I've never heard it. Hallmark. <laughs> really, really. <laughs> Well, we got some heavy Pittsburghies in my family. Mount I know Washington. there's a lot of people who oh, go to Warsh to close. Like oh my! And the Kmart's and down the rabbit hole we went. <laughs> mm. We got really localized. Well, though, people yeah. were talking about your Pittsburgh accent coming off a little bit in the chat room. So go, going back to the table what? for three. Do we have smack talkers? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Mine is. Oh yes. <laughs> okay. For this. Oh, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I got one, and I. <laughs> I can't even fake it. <laughs> Gotta go downtown in that. <laughs> Carlin says, don't call me a K, Mark. I like Target. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's let's bring this around. Um, other, uh, somebody mentioned in the chat room, and I apologize because it, it's it scrolled off, but uh, speaking of people getting attention of the old heads in WWE, uh, Velveteen Dream. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, oh. when, well, first of all, yeah. going full Rick Rude. Call in, me up, yeah. Vince. Again. In actions, Call in tights. Call me up. Again. Vince. Yes. <laughs> and while not my though. favorite Velveteen Dream match so far. Agreed. Agreed. Still a good match, though. My, Agreed. My favorite in optics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, between. between I, I still think the Hogan stuff was the best, though. Oh, the Hogan stuff was pretty good. Um, but uh, y- y- there was. And, it, and honestly, like, y- even. There was a Rick Rude sequence, and there was another something else that I, I recognized was kind of like an old school, like punch sequence. Like, like there was a lot of callback stuff that they were doing in mm-hmm. that match. Which, What's old is new again. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Like somebody can just absolutely just reenact the completion of the Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania six, <laughs> and it's new to somebody, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a whole generation that most yeah. don't even know who Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior are. I mean, if you're living under a rock. However, all that stuff, it was great. It's timeless. Mm. Like timeless. you said, how many people refer back to an old school Harley race match, a Buddy Rogers match? You know, shoot, you know, Bob Backlund. You know, you want to go back, you know, a little bit mainstream? It's it's amazing. But I think people, someone like Velveteen, he is he's the mecca because he can be or do anything and wear mm-hmm. anything and portray mm-hmm. a different personality and he's still him in the essence you know that it's him he already has that identity you know what i mean whereas if someone else comes out dressed as someone else you're like what charlie or haas similar charlie haas <laughs> charlie haas <laughs> charlie charlie yeah, haas again you know again? Uh, yeah Oh yeah, he did do that for a little bit. Uh, They've really tried that with everybody, haven't they? Curtis mm-hmm. Axel. Yeah. Curtis Axel. Yes. In general. Uh, Big yeah. Show. He was entertaining with it. I, I give Axel a lot of Big credit when he was doing that. Yeah. Well, Big Show, I thought you meant. The, the Big Show also something. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Big Show is there as well. How my uh, uh, Carter's asking uh, how much heat was Velveteen, Velveteen getting for the Hulk Hogan attire? 
um, uh, as well. I, I don't think so. It's still callback. Yeah. We're, we're still allowed to talk about Hulk Hogan. They're referencing Hulk Hogan a lot on WWE TV, so I don't think it's... Uh, uh, this was also as old as new again. Reinstated. What, yeah. What's that, Riz? This was also before when Hulk Hogan was reinstated. This is true, but I, I don't think, I, I don't think he would have gone. You know, he wouldn't. I think it was more of a jab at Hulk Hogan, to be honest. No, no, it was. Yeah, probably a little bit too. But it's probably you know, like it, it, Triple H is is probably the last line of defense there on NXT, and mm. you know he probably loved yeah. it. Uh, but um, other than that, I, we didn't even talk about the main event. Champa, thanks to his Good. Twitter, I will never mess this up again. Good I'm having my Finn Balor <laughs> moment with him. Um, Champa and Gargano, another I, another amazingly brutal, great, great match. Maybe a little right bit be, of weird right end. before the end of that match, I said, Johnny's going to do something dumb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Johnny did something dumb, and then I quoted Spaceballs because good is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That po- that quote popped into my head. I'm like, oh, Johnny. That is pretty much every like angle now in WWE. Yeah, it's either the heel is getting like really good pops, or the f- or somebody does something stupid. Mm-hmm. For real, like, like a, it's just somebody messes up, like Gargano. Yeah, so 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 apparently, like going too far and 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 getting mad for him means just losing common sense at this point. I mean, that's fine Zen. He needs to find Zen. Well, maybe you should he talk to Ginger to, Mahal over at Raw. Yeah, I was just gonna say. There you go. Talk what to modern day Mar- Maharaja. Oh, just namaste, <laughs> namaste that. Um, but uh, no, 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 I'm gonna leave. <laughs> uh, of course, Gargano injured for that, um, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. I, I, I think you know it'll be interesting to see Champa kind of running wild on uh, NXT here Champa. for a little bit. Champa, ah, Ch- oh, damn it! He's Although gonna... I will say, he does have the nicest shirt they've come out with in a long time. For I WWE. haven't seen his shirt, and is it better than his Kurt shirt Hawkins? Is nice. The flag shirt? Yeah, the, 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 the flag. The new one, yeah. I, I thought that was awesome. I like it a lot. Great. I'm a fan. It's black and gold. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Black and gold. A lot of those coming up. Um, well, anyway, so a big, uh, it was a good weekend. I, you know, a lot of people were kind of down on SummerSlam. I thought it was a really good WWE show in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of fun. I think we had a lot of moments uh, out of that. I thought Demon Demon popping up was a nice surprise. Yeah. That was a really nice surprise. Oh, I popped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I popped. She popped so big. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. And then I was watching, um, you know, I I went on the Twitter and saw everyone kind of batching like, oh, you know, here's this match that we don't even want to see. And I was actually like, I do want to see this. And then he came out as the demon and I freaked out a little. I was like, I want to see this even more. She had a spoiler alert and she held it back from me because we were a little bit behind. Yeah, a day or two. I love the... Uh, resurrection of Baron Corbin. I love his mm-hmm. image, his persona, the way he carries himself, the story. That I love it. And Shane's not so much sold on it. And I think everyone has, you know, their flavor of ice cream, but I think it's working. And I'm a huge fan of Finn. So. TGI Friday's ice cream. What? <laughs> Talking about ice cream. ice cream. Talking about ice cream. <laughs> Baron Corbin works there. Ice, <laughs> speaking of ice cream, I have one right right here Ooh. If the audience can see that's how much we like ice cream, <laughs> ice cream. It's, all it's, the it's flavors a, it, for you guys on audio it's a sparkly ice cream necklace yes it is <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome you know I, it yeah. was um I, I corbin's definitely been reinvented and awesome in this role mm. i know i i'm curious if he's ready to be full-on gm without mm. being like the foil for you know angle and everything like that uh and and i I, I was definitely getting tired of Finn versus Baron for the last two months mm-hmm. a little bit. So this is a nice little change up for it. I do also love, I didn't fight Finn. I fought the demon. You're a coward. You didn't show <laughs> up. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This Baron is, what does he think is happening here? It's so, a different guy. But yeah, yeah, no, that's a lot of fun. Um, also, I think, so we, we saw this start at WrestleMania you know, a lot of technology. We talked about the VR uh, side of things over on Awesome Cast. If you guys want to check that out from this week on uh, episode 309. Um, 
which we had a lot of fun with that. But they're doing the 3D like floaty thing. I noticed that. Oh, and yeah. I really they like it. They started at WrestleMania. I noticed it then. It's getting better. And the, the demon portal was great. The demon portal. Was, Everything else was. Eh. It was. It was kind of cool. They're they fitting dog. it in a lot better. Uh, that, more. I didn't even see the big dog until it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it bit me. It, you say it blends in better, like you were saying, right? It's uh, more intertwined. Yeah, it, it, and I love that the Finn one um, looked looked like um, the pink cloud from Ghostbusters yeah, Two cool. with the uh, the slime at the end there. Although, uh, if you're gonna pull a Ghostbusters a Ghostbusters movie, why two? I watch two a lot, and I like I like two. I like to. I'm okay. That's fair. Flavors of ice cream. Exactly. I do it. Full I love, circle. I love everything original and real Ghostbusters cartoon. Just, just into it all. I grew up on this stuff, man. It's my Hulk Hogan era of of Ghostbusters. Um, yeah. Well, guys, if you guys want to check out some new school and old school, uh, sometimes combined, you can go check it out at IndieWrestling.us. We got a lot going on there, and in uh, in about a week, we're going to have a pretty big announcement. But in the meantime, what's better than Indie Wrestling? And Indie Wrestling with our friends, uh, Lady Frost and Victor Benjamin, uh, represented on there, uh, sometimes by a different name. Some guy named Shane is on there, too. I, I don't know. That's somebody. Who? Uh, who? who? Ooh. Uh, but over there, IndieWrestling.us, if you go at the top, you can sign up for a free indie uh, IndieWrestling.us newsletter, including news from the Wrestling Mayhem show here. And you can get a free digital download from over there. Everyone so loves free. Everyone loves free. IndieWrestling.us. You can get uh, Lady Frost over there in her uh, Rise Wrestling uh, uh, first couple of matches as well. Uh -huh. Don't get excited, guys. They were rough. Icebreaker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the early days, it's right? It's the early days. It's the Let's early days. <laughs> I mean, you know, Elias wasn't amazing when he came out Rome at first in those airbrush, airbrush tights and uh, uh, DJ Z with the poofy hair right. being the Philip <laughs> Filipino supermodel. Oh, that's yep. a tough and tongue twister. That's all there. It's all there at IndieWrestling.us. <laughs> and I'm sure they would love to forget it. But anyways, uh, <laughs> and check out, of course, a lot of clips um, from these guys and the, especially the latest shows here over on our YouTube and Facebook page for IndieWrestling.us, including speaking of Shima, uh, DJZ, uh, we just put up a match from Night of Legends 2011 of him versus uh, John McChesney uh, that you can wow. watch. It's a, a great match from uh, back then. I can't remember what Shima's name was back then. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it was probably Zima Ion Zima at the time. Zima. It was 2011 ish, I think. Was was that we'll pre that. pre DJ era? Maybe Correct. so. Mm -hmm. A lot of that stuff. Go check it out and some stuff from our friends at Black Diamond Wrestling. Clips from Rise Wrestling, International Wrestling Cartel. They just had an amazing Cage Fury 2018 that's flying off the digital shelves. And of course, all those available at the new Vimeo VOD rental and purchase your option. Uh, and those work. I just uh, actually emailing with somebody today uh that was having a uh, uh, we we're figuring some, some something out with his account and uh they're watching it on uh, the vimeo app uh thanks to uh the app on their playstation 4 and i know we do have uh some people watching on rokus and things get them on your tv it's the easiest way hit the uh, video on demand button over at indie wrestling.us and see what we got a lot of Premier Championship Wrestling just went up. A lot of old Renegade Wrestling Alliance from this past year. Uh, so go check it out. It's a lot of it's a lot, trying to make indie wrestling easier for you guys to consume and support these guys and discover some new talent that may be the next Elias, the next Johnny Gargano. Who knows? Who knows? And even see where those guys came from as well. So uh, we'll be back after this message with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show still rolling here. The Savage Gentleman here in the studio, Victor Benjamin. In the flesh. That's right. That's right. As well as Lady Frost. Keeping it chilled in here. So punny. You're so punny, I'm, Sorg. I'm trying. I'm trying. Transitions are hard. Also with us remote, Bobby FJ Town, still hanging out. What's up? He, wa he just waved to you guys on audio. And of yeah, course, the Riz. What's up, Riz? Hey, Sorg. Hey. And uh, it is time for the biggest of big questions. And of course, we are... Uh, okay, despite the fact that we have two other broadcast shows on the WWE Network in the, in, in the meantime... 
uh, between the, the Australia Super Show and Hell in a Cell. Uh, we do have the women's evolution. I, I think that's going to be the most talked about probably between, despite whatever is going on, on in WWE uh, elsewise. Uh, and that's a big question for this week. We, we kind of talked about there's going to be Trish versus Alexa. Um, I want Lita versus anybody. Uh, what would be your kind of could be cross generational could be you know whatever you, you think would make good for this uh your dream match your women's dream match for uh wwe's evolution podcast coming up here a podcast pay-per-view geez at the end of october um i already have some from the chat room but who wants to go first here I got one. i'll take this one. Oh, let's give it to the gentleman yes thank you. Ahead, you you sir are quite a gentleman yourself thank you I would have to say Alondra Blaze versus Mella. Ooh. Does she drive a monster truck out to the ring? Does she moonwalk to the ring? Hmm. <laughs> or is it like the Hulk Hogan versus the Giant match where they had a, both had... Monster, monster trucks. trucks. <laughs> I want to see a Carmella monster truck. <laughs> it'll be the most. It'll be the most blinged out monster truck yeah. ever. Be <laughs> dazzled for side. days. Oh, the rims on that thing. Dollar signs. Bling bling. Mm. <laughs> awesome. Monster truck will start to cry and then we'll fake it. The the monster truck will like go backwards like it's moonwalking. <laughs> That's reverse. Um, what uh, Riz? You said you had one. I do, and it right when you first asked me this question, I didn't really think of anything until the second time you asked me, which was on like a little bit ago. What? And it was on because it was on air, and I almost let out a huge gasp on air because this match just came to me: Nikki Cross versus Victoria. Ooh. Oh, like that. Oh. I like that. I like that. And Victoria's still going. So she's just that she was just at Shakara a couple years ago. She also owns a yep. pizza place. She owns a what? Pizza place, doesn't she? She owns a pizza place? Does, pizza place? Does she own an ice cream place? Or a bar, but either a bar or a pizza place. Probably the same thing. Is the square was still there? Right, what it's called? I don't know. Are we it's in Chicago, so it's so, okay. Okay, so it's deep dish. Got it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, Lady Frost, do you have one? (laughs) Save us from the segue. Am I allowed to go slightly fictitious? Because what crossed my mind was China Mm -hmm. and Rhonda. Oh, jeez. I know. Right? Right? That's that's where my head went. That is a future WWE 2K. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Someone's making it right now. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Carter, get on it. (laughs) Or, or I, I, I recently picked up, I, I think I've mentioned on here, I picked up uh, the WWE All-Stars, where it was old versus new. Yes. And I got the, like, the Wii version of it. And like I want that again, you know, but like with the women's division that has like the Chinas and, and everything, you know, mm. they just a lot of fun to do that. It was more arcadey and stuff, too. So, no, I like that. Man, I'm, I'm trying to think, because I mean, what is the size differential there? Like, China's... I know How tall was China? I, she always five just ten, looked like maybe really five five ten, She always looked like she towered over everybody, but they're probably like just so they were just, just so stacked. She's so stacked. She's five was ten? she five ten? Yeah. So she would look like next to Charlotte. She'd be around the same size. Isn't Charlotte a little taller? A little bit. I don't know. I think Charlotte's taller. We got the Google the internet. Sex. right? They always did the the Tom Cruise angle. So you know? Charlotte would be a little bit taller. Yeah. Wow. It'd be like Hogan versus Andre. Reach versus weight. You know what I mean? Is yeah. It, does that come into play then? Charlotte is one forty one. Charlotte is one forty one. Producer Messi's on the case. We do, have do, 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 Taylor tape is calculated. China was built Boom. in the 80s. And now you know but this different had, weight class. She had her lean days and then she had her mass days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, because later on she was like kind of that post-Playboy mm-hmm. deal where she was just leaned up and, and just 
because uh, becoming more feminine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just was more it's, more yeah, girly. Yeah, she like did the reverse. Like she came in so badass masculine, and then it was like she was gonna get more diva ish. Yeah, almost, but. Yeah. She was a pioneer, I think, for badass women, period. She was still, yeah, she was definitely still badass when yeah. she even evolved into that. So, yeah. Scary Sherry on roids? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> uh, uh, pushing it. Bobby, you have J-Town. What about you? You got a pick? Um, I do. I, I think this should be the main event of Evolution, but they're probably going to do it later down the road. But I want to see the four horsewomen women versus the four horsewomen. Oh yeah, yeah. They kind of killed all my thoughts about anime. this happening. Uh, and soon they said they said Jessamine and um, Marina are like like doing really well in NXT, like in the performance center, training wise. So it could happen sooner than later. Yeah, we're gonna have like like the technically five MMA based women's wrestlers mm-hmm. because um yeah mm-hmm. Baszler, ba- Shayna, well Shayna, but well, so there's the four the horse women yeah, but then there's yeah. the other one that got um, caught up along with Mandy Rose. I can't remember her name. Sonya Deville. Sonya. Sonya Deville. Yeah. So I mean, I I feel bad for Sonya because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel she, like she like she came in with this and time. she's just gonna get drowned out yep. by mm-hmm. these ones. Like, like yeah. can she just at least be but like she can go? She can go, but you know. She needs something she might else. Gimmick to change. That gimmick. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, what else can I do? You know, because look, look, look what they did with Sarah Logan. I mean, she was a farmer, farm girl. Now she's a Viking. No, no, no. But Sarah Logan became Sarah Logan. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she, they yeah, were trying to give her this Kentucky thing. <laughs> yeah. That that, set, that felt <laughs> so. Became Crazy Mary Dobson. If, yeah, she basically became Crazy Mary mm-hmm. Dobson and the person you see on her Instagram with Ray Rowe. So he needs to feed the goats. eating giant turkey legs. Eating giant turkey legs. Yeah. you know, at the Ren Fest. It, it just, it just, it just amazing. You know, the best little Viking couple ever, yep. and they're both just that on TV now, which is mm. just perfect. I'm a fan of Ray's, and he got a great beard. <laughs> great beard. He's working a good. I, I need to. I don't know. I need to kind of a uh, redo on my beard here. Yeah, so, my nephew's it. got a good beard going. He actually looks a lot like Ray Rowe. He looks like a young Ray Rowe. Okay. Actually, I, there was a new picture of Ray Rowe after he got his beard trimmed, and it looks just like my nephew. <laughs> oh, man. It's weird. Um, and my nephew can probably suplex me, too, because he's a, he's a, he, he knows, he knows some. Yeah, wrestling. he's really good. Yeah, he's really good at that stuff. Uh, anyways, um, from the chat room, Dave Ponder has Awesome Kong versus Nia Jax. Wow. Ooh, That'd oh, be man. good. I would love that. Which they- Awesome Kong? From Glow? <laughs> yeah. so, so you want you want the uh what, what is she the welfare queen the welfare queen yeah. welfare queen versus nia Jax. can we get that can we i don't think we can get that on wwe tv okay. but no. Damn. Was, i mean you know it was the 80s we didn't know any better okay <laughs> as they say on edge and christian okay. yes <laughs> but uh but no I, I love to see awesome kong karma come back in that capacity mm-hmm. i would love her like i wonder if they would talk her into coming back now that she's got that kind of glow, she probably has a contract with glow. There, glow, glow, something. Well, so they well didn't they already do a little bit of mini promotion with where like the glow girls showed up like at a SmackDown or yeah. something? Yeah, yeah, they showed up. So at SmackDown. I think she that, wasn't among them. I don't think she that. wasn't among that. I mean, I wonder why. I don't think she was um, in that. But I mean, that'd be kind of a. I could see them doing that crossover eventually, right? Yeah. I know would, season three got a pickup too. Yes, it did. I would like it. You know, the the time with Karma was cut really short, so mm-hmm. you know I was kind of let down by that. At least, hey, she found a great career afterwards. That's good to see. Mm-hmm. Um, not everybody has to be the Rock to have a good transition from wrestling to acting, right? Mm-hmm. Right, and I think she's a perfect example. Um, from the chat room again, Danielle says Lady Frost versus Alexa Bliss. Bliss. Ooh. Oh, mm-hmm. I like it. gymnast versus gymnast. Mm-hmm. I think we. I think we're on to something. In a, I'm trying to think of a word of something gymnasts do. In a in a flip off. No. No, no, that doesn't sound. No, no, no. Just roll that back. Just, oh, okay. We'll just we'll fix that in post. Uh, anyways, <laughs> more from the chat room. Uh, uh, I'll say no. Lady Frost versus AJ Lee. Uh, Kelly Kelly versus Mandy Rose. From Cubby out there, okay. Yeah, I can see that. I very similar. I still enjoy. I don't know if they're still doing it lately, but Mandy Rose's intro and how it has that kind of fade oh, on the soft. outside, the softness on the mm. outside. Um, Max on it. What's that? 
I think Bobby, you, you said it first. So it's, it's, it's very Oksana like. Yeah. Is it? Will they do that for her? Not yeah. Oscar. Oh, I, I, oh, Oksana, not Oksana. Oh, wow, that's a mix-up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did do that with her. <laughs> They're also yeah, yeah. Um, and also Brandon says Chelsea, Chelsea Green and Charlotte versus Sasha and Bailey. Wow. Okay. Oh yeah, that was the first yeah, one up there. Sorry about one. that. Yeah, Alex was the first one up that said um Oscar versus Bold Nakano, who is doing great like some we had a post we were talking about her on a show a couple of weeks ago. She's like uh showed up on in at some wrestling show in Japan is look and is she's looking great. So it'd be good to get her over here for that. I think it and I think it was something like a green card or something that was keeping her from the States. Like some situation. What about Michelle McCool and Layla versus the Iconics? Oh, that yeah. Ooh. Oh, absolutely. And at least one of those popped back up at the Rumble, right? Mm-hmm. So what about yeah, Michelle McCool? What's that? A good show too. Tina, I am not seeing Tina's in the chat room. I think it needs a refresh. Nakano versus Naya. Jazz versus that was my second. Jazz versus Naomi. Mm-hmm. Alunda versus and Alunda versus Ronda. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't Ooh. be stepping on my toes. <laughs> That's my pick. How <laughs> to turn savage. Oh, there we go. Now I'm getting to uh, come through now. Um, hey, well, I want to see Ember Moon versus Asuka again. Yeah, yeah, on a bigger stage. Those, uh-huh. are, those are some really good matches there. And, and Ember's been doing well, but I've just... Need to give her a it's weird line. to say there's not enough room for everybody to shine in the women's yeah. division on a three hour raw every week. It's only three hours? Yeah. Only? I, I know, only. Right. Well, no, actually, it's not. It's about three hours and 15 minutes, right? Oh, right. Yeah. good call. <laughs> so, uh, but, anyways, uh, it'll be interesting to see what they got go. Seeing, seeing Mandy Powerlift blew my mind. Really? I haven't seen that bit. Yeah. So. Was it in soft lighting? <laughs> yeah, the only, the only, the only gym uh, selfies in soft lighting is Mandy Rose's Instagram. I'm sure. I have glaucoma. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, uh, I want to give a shout out. Pro wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, and Pro- Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun. Featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro Wrestling puts the smart back in smart mark, and not K smart. K mark from earlier. K just want to point that out. K marks. K marks. K marks. Schmarks. Schmarks. I think we just came Schmarks. up with it. Is, is it Schmark Week? Schmark Week. Did somebody say Smarky? Oh. Oh, oh, poor guy. Poor Smarky. I gotta go back to sleep and recover. Oh, you ever see a you, you ever right see a things. turtle puppet with a double bandage on its nose? Well, you have yeah. now if you're on our video version. You gotta learn today. But anyways, <laughs> I'm I'm sure Case Mark is gonna be a new T-shirt uh, very soon now at OccupyProWrestling.com. Our good friends over there, power to the Smarks on the Twitter. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the show and if you uh will look for if you're looking for some great advertising options that won't break the bank please hit up producer missy over there uh and uh, talk advertising at info at sorgatronmedia.com all right guys so again there's a big hey guys there's a show there's a wrestling show in pittsburgh i know that never happens around here (laughs) jeez actually there was was there a wrestling show in pittsburgh this past saturday i feel like it's weird i got to watch takeover live for the first time in ever because I wasn't working a wrestling show, but um, congratulations! Yeah, I know it's like it's like a life moment for me. Uh, but but still, so this Friday, mm-hmm. a brand new um, group called Black Craft Wrestling is coming to town uh, with their uh, debut show, their debut eye pay per view, um, the Burning Bridges, I believe, is the name of it. Yes. And uh, and you two are going to be a part of that as well uh so so what what can you tell me about this uh promotion that's coming up here we've seen a lot of videos but for those that maybe haven't caught them yet it's a wrestling show of epic proportions (laughs) that it is star-studded cast is going to be pretty much a rock concert uh wrestling show at the same time it's it's a it's a show for every single person that enjoys entertainment, live entertainment. 
Oh, what what oh. was that? that? That is a Sorry. musical interlude by accident, apparently. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, it's been pretty incredible to watch these guys on uh, uh, Facebook, like watching the videos. Doug Bradley, Pinhead, is part of yes some of the videos there. I believe he's a preacher. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. We, we had a small encounter with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. The first video that was... Oh, I didn't see this. Oh. oh. I mean, we, we were related to him. We were more abducted. Mm-hmm. Uh, joined the cult, drank the Kool-Aid. There, uh, there's a lot going on. And, and again, Blackcraft uh, is a actually a clothing line. It is. Right? Yeah. So there's a little bit of a crossover thing, which has also led to some interesting <laughs> merchandise as well. Mm-hmm. Like in some of the coolest wrestling shirts I think I've seen um, uh, as well. So um, it, it's... It, it's something different, and that's what I'm loving about like all these groups popping up and seeing these guys start up. Um, and it's cool to see guys like you um, um, a part of something like this, and that it's uh, on iPay per view, accessible to everybody right out the gate, and uh, doing something that feels a little bit different than the typical wrestling in your local town mm-hmm. a bit here. So, uh, so tell us what are you in st- in store for? Um, what, what's coming up for you here at Blackcraft this this week? Who, who are you facing? Ah. Uh. I don't know yet. Hopefully, Every, everything's a little bit of a mystery. Really? With them. Yep they uh, they have a lot that has yet to be unveiled. Okay. Um, but there are some hints. I think with some Twitter beef happening. Twitter beef, Ronnie. <laughs> I know you're listening. I'm gonna <laughs> kick your head off. And Ronnie oh. is for those that don't know. Ronnie Radke, falling in reverse. I don't know. Lady Frost tweeted out something about. Being excited he was going to be at the show. Mm-hmm. I yawned. He got a little hurt. We exchanged. You know, I got a little savage. His fans turned turned me into the bad guy. Like, I was the bad guy. It's my hometown. He's coming into my territory? Into my business? Are you serious right now? <laughs> over a tweet. It was over a tweet. Over it a was. tweet. It never happens these days. No. no. So... <laughs> But, we'll see we'll see what what happens um but interesting is it, it's in i was actually seeing a little bit um of a boxing event somebody was instagramming the other day from this venue it's the priory which yeah. is a fancy venue in the north side it seems and uh it, it was going to be cool to see uh what happens with uh with these guys here so um but um but you guys also we'll talk about this a little bit more but you guys just did a little bit of traveling as well we did. we did. We just got back a few days ago, actually. Mm-hmm. Traveled across the country multiple times, two <laughs> weeks. So, yeah, we spent the first week in Texas with the one and only Rudy Gonzalez. Rudy boy. Hi, Rudy. Um, <laughs> he is one of the best trainers. Um, he has a nice little facility that is 95 degrees in Texas. 95? <laughs> no. Listen, it's a sweltering sweat box that <laughs> you do nothing but learn. Yes, and it's the way wrestling's supposed to be. If you're yes. not sweating or freezing uh, when you're when you're learning, ten t-shirts yeah. a day. We said ten right. t-shirts ten a day. Ten t-shirts a day. We did two a days there. We went at noon and then at five or six, four, yeah. five. I don't know. Um, two days. Long days. Yep, and. It was great. I mean, we went to drilling, fundamentals, cardio, warm-ups, everything. He just he gave us the works, and he was nothing but kind. He opened us, his doors to us, and, uh, you know, we have a great connection there with someone that's – he's been mentoring me from across the country. Like, we'll send videos to each other, and, you know, he's just someone that wants to help others learn and succeed. If you're willing to put in the work and the time and the effort, they – you know, he'll bounce that reciprocity back. He'll give it right to you. So – um, that was our first week in Texas. And then we went to Florida to check out a couple of training centers there. Um, and we simultaneously vacationed with our good friends and their kids. So we did, um, a couple of vacation activities and then some grueling wrestling days and more heat. So it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a sweaty guy. And we had to wash more shirts. <laughs> is this an MMA thing? Like, like, a, the, do you get like Brock Lesnar sweaty? 
I do, we actually just had that conversation <laughs> really? while Brock Lesnar was dripping sweat, <laughs> yeah, this pouring is in the match. And I said, do I look like that? I don't sweat that much. I'm going to sweat I don't sweat that much. She disagreed. <laughs> yes, I don't does. think I see it when you're in a match, though, the way he does. It glistens off my body. Oh, that's 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 it. It's <laughs> more. Sparkles. I sparkle. <laughs> you sparkle. You sparkle like a damn Twilight vampire. I sparkle like a vampire. <laughs> oh, geez. I got this great chiseled beard as well. <laughs> we know. And, we oh, know. that soaks it up. That's the. There you go. Because mm-hmm. then you don't get the drippage as, as much. Right. Um, that's awesome. You know who doesn't have a good beard? Hmm. Ronnie Radke. <laughs> no. <laughs> he has a very beautiful man face. I can't wait to punch it. I'm going to punch him right in his surgically enhanced face. <laughs> surgically enhanced? I don't know. I are mean, you are you accusing this man of having some work done? I never said that. <laughs> I didn't say that. Are you implying, good sir? Maybe he wears makeup. I don't know. Sav- I'm not judging him. That's savage. Stay savage. <laughs> Anyways, Blackcraft Wrestling. Uh, where can people find uh, the iPay-Per-View this past? This is next one coming up. Blackcraftwrestling.com. There There's go. a big giant link for falling in reverse. I don't know why our picture isn't on there. The pretty That's popular weird. picture. Yeah, yeah it was a falling in reverse. Up. It, it's a wrestling show. Yeah. This guy. I don't know. Whatever that deal is. He's never going to live up to the hype. It's the, uh, Tim, Tim says that it's, it's the makeup that he wears. <laughs> <laughs> Guyliner. <laughs> well, go check that out. Again, a lot of the friends of the show, you guys are part of it. The main event are going to be part of it the as well. Event, indeed. Um, I think I heard Sean Phoenix is going to be a part of it. Sean Phoenix is mm-hmm. a part of it. So, uh, G Raver as well. So, mm-hmm. uh, if anybody fits into that, G Raver is probably one of them. Uh, so yes. That style. The, 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 that entire match is going to be crazy. It's a ladder match. Mm-hmm. It was just announced a four four way ladder match. Because why not? I'm pretty sure G Raver is winning that match. There's no yeah. way he can't. We'll see. Yeah, we've seen we've seen some of the stuff he does um, lately as well. So yeah, he's he's pretty pretty nuts. We we worry about you on this show, G Raver. Seriously, <laughs> we're worried about you. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, Chris Dickinson and PCO. <laughs> oh my, um, that is gonna be. You want to talk about Savage? Right. Literally, this guy is shocking himself, cutting his skin. What else did he do? Is uh, what was his most Staples. recent one? Oh, the Staples Staples to the head. Talking about electricity. Um, I, about I, PCO? I'm, I I'm kind of, I'm kind of afraid to show the video because it gets pretty graphic. And I believe the right. guy giving him the the piercings here is the guy I saw hanging from a skin at the gathering of the Juggalos, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, so, oh my! Yeah. Oh boy! Because yeah, oh, I'm like, those right. tattoos look familiar, buddy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I. It, okay, we're gonna just skip that. It, it gets a little. Even graphic for this show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh boy. There's a lot of blood on my screen right now. Um, it, it's not for the weak of heart. It's something different. Um, I, like I said, uh, I, I go check it out. It's 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 really it's really interesting. And I, I'm really interested to see what what happens here. And I believe they are following it up with. Uh, there's going to be another show coming up in California yeah. as well. So October this is October fifth. October fifth. Um, um, Reapers Revenge. Reapers Revenge. Yeah. So this is there. These guys are making a nationwide play, and I think that's it's a pretty cool thing to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was once it's told be... they do not want to compete with the indie circuit. Really? Yes. It's gonna be pretty big. Judging by that presentation, it's um. Th- this is not a guy with a handy cam doing these wrestling promos. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> these are. Uh, it's a full budget production with these guys. Yep. Spare no expense. Mm-hmm. You got to pay to play. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I can't wait to see what the actual show looks like here. Um, and a lot of familiar names. Like Johnny Johnny Blackcraft. Johnny Blackcraft. Mm-hmm. Is going to be a part of it. Um, and a lot of other. Taya. Uh, Taya is going to be a part of it as well. Not Taya Blackcraft. But. No. <laughs> Could be. Kevin Blackwood. Kevin Blackwood is mm-hmm. going to be there also. Harlow. Uh, Pepper Parks. Pepper Parks. The Butcher and the Blade. I was going to say. The Butcher. You know, so that's who we got on our screen I'm, right I'm now. I'm fans. I'm fans of the Butcher and the Blade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... You know, I got to root for my boys, the main event. Dude, I've seen Pepper Parks for like like 10 years, and this is not a Pepper Parks that, uh, well, that's a guy with the mustache. That's not him. Um, but I, I've not seen like this intensity out of a Pepper Parks mm-hmm. for a while. Not, not on anything. We've Did seen. he swear? I think he swore. He's that's not PG friendly. There's some swears in there. I mean, I it's okay for this show. I don't know if the show is going to be PG friendly. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so for something a little different, go check it out and check good. out our good Watch friends. Watch Ronnie here. bleed. <laughs> A Black Raptor Wrestling. Awesome. Um, also, hey, want to give a shout out to our friends at Thrifty Podcast. 
Um, listen, it, it, this one, he's a, he's a wrestling fan, and we have a lot of fun with that. He's the one that filled our couch with all the wrestling buddies. Mm. It was a fun day. I, there was wrestling buddies I've never seen over there. You know, on top, yeah. So on top of all the wrestling toys, Lady Cross is checking out all of our collection back there. That's actually, weird actually, it's, some of those back. some of those are contributions, uh, especially the action figures are contributions from our friends at thrifty at thrifty no no Groot is our plant Groot, Groot is our that that was the first thing in the studio was Groot dancing Groot in the window I love it yes uh but anyways today's sentimental attachment to things uh other people have forgotten and tossed aside might only be rivaled by Virgil's sentimental attachment to his former WWE career oh also savage yes. uh stay savage sword. I love I love we just take a dig at Virgil every week on the show at this point as part of this ad, um, can you guys? I mean, it's, it's twenty bucks if you do it. I that is right. That is right. Uh, can, can you guess which one has a great podcast talking about the happiness of the sentimental attachment brings? <laughs> Could you imagine if Virgil had a podcast? No, uh, Virgil, if you wow. like a podcast, uh, hit us up. It would take place uh, at the Olive Garden. Check out check <laughs> out the Thrifty Podcast on the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Uh, look up Thrifty Podcast on your favorite podcast player, or check the link at sorgatronmedia.com. Those guys had a really cool event. A uh, a uh, hard times uh, the the Thrifty event where they had like a rummage. Like a junk sale at Mr. Roboto Project while uh, music played. It was it, it looked like it was pretty damn cool. Uh, so go check them out. Some good stuff happening there. All did right. Have, did everybody finish that puzzle yet? What puzzle? Oh no, we did. Well, no, we we, we put the puzzle back in the box because we had to use the table. So. Oh. Um. But anyways. That means we can put it back together, sort. That means we can rebuild it, and maybe we'll get all the black pieces to work together. So. Probably. Not. Um. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh it's time for in the show to find out what you learned from wrestling this week who would like to go first riz bobby bobby sorg mm-hmm. no i'll go I-, I got two jeff hardy related things oh yeah. <laughs> you learned two things from jeff hardy was uh, one how to I do your makeup learned. or a swanton I, on the apron i learned even if jeff hardy gets knocked out He's still okay because his eyes are open at all times. Is that comparable to if a tree falls in a forest? Yes. Okay. Uh, The other Jeff Hardy thing I learned tonight on SmackDown was uh, it is legal to put your finger through somebody's earlobe holes, but it is illegal to kick somebody in the balls. Says it right Mm -hmm. here in the WWE Book of Rules that we have here in the studio. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Yeah, you know, I I feel like um, having holes big enough for your fingers in your ears in your earlobes was not a thing when they wrote the WWE. Fear, the, yeah, the, yeah, like I feel like that needs an addendum of some sort, right? I mean, it needs you, a Randy Orton rule, which just says "Go away, Randy." <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, oh, they're still. Did he do it again? He did it again tonight. Oh man, he loves doing that. It's a it's a horrible. It's like visual. it's like showing his dick, Sorg. <laughs> Yes, Randy Orton loves to do a lot of creepy things. Are we swearing he now? Two things. He yes. loves oh, two things. We are his dick oh. and putting his hand in Jeff Hardy's ear, ear holes. Jeez. After probably sneezing into it and not watching the uh, news. Riz, what'd you learn? Hopefully it's not, not something about hygiene. <laughs> I learned Xavier Woods hates me. What? Oh, yeah! We still oh, don't know man. why Xavier Woods blocked you, but we know thanks to Table 3, he will not unblock you. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm screwed. I'm You're surprised screwed. he didn't. I'm surprised he didn't block the Mayhem show for yeah, because because it is unblocked. Somebody because somebody <laughs> uh, tweeted out that they should unblock the Riz. Who oh, may, no. may or may not. Oh, okay, have okay. Been so so if you haven't watched Table for Three, he talks about how people will try to meet him in person. Xavier I Woods. Never met, no. Wait, no. No, 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 no. The people that have been blocked by Xavier Woods, like say a year oh, ago, yeah. will try to meet him at like a signing or something to ask him to unblock him. Or to which he'll he'll just wow. say, Listen, you're blocked for a reason, probably. I don't know what it was, but you definitely offended me. You're not yeah. getting unblocked. And apparently if some they, they were talking about because I guess Matt Hardy gets this too, like other people will tweet to him to unblock their friend, mm-hmm. and then his solution is I will block you too. Well, so thank you for getting the Mayhem show well, blocked. I have sorry, to, Sorg. I have to see now if if, if the Wrestling Mayhem show is blocked by Xavier Woods. N- not yet. Not it yet? Will. You've checked? Not yet. Oh, damn it. I just hope he 
just doesn't notice that. Or he's going to get a flood of, of please unblock my friend. Oh, good. Austin, Austin Creed at getting new ribs on Twitter. What? What? Um, wow. Well, yeah, he, has, is... he probably has to get surgery after like what well, happened. After the Bludgeon Brothers. Okay. That's that's good. I'm, I'm glad we can see oh, By the way, they won the attack champs, by the way. Oh. Ah, spoilers! Ah, spoilers! <laughs> no, that works. That you know, works. we're not watching this live. <laughs> or, I mean, we're live now. But... Well, yeah, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Savage Gentleman, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned that musician, musicians should stay on the stage and out of the ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Elias. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Elias? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Damn it. I love Elias. It didn't work well for Machine Gun Kelly either. No. It looked really not well for him. No. Yeah. Kid it's Rock. not going to end well for Ronnie Radke either. Nope. Nope. Lady Frost, what would you learn from wrestling this week? Mm. I learned so many things. I'm trying to... I don't know if I want to be serious or make a joke now. I don't have anything off the top of my head. I really don't. I was unprepared for this. What about what about doing the drives? What about training with the Wild Samoans? What about training WXW? What about training WWN? There were a lot of training facilities. Uh, I do know that I learned you're going to have a lot of suggestions from different people um, on the way that they teach or the way that they say that you should do something. Um some people's opinions matter more than others, but at the end of the day, I think it's really what fits your body and your soul. Flavors like of right. ice cream. Yeah. As long as you're doing things properly and safe, um, you know, I think footwork is either you you have it or you're uncoordinated. Um, there are certain movements that definitely you need to be in position, but um, as far as picking and choosing who you really want to learn from. That was my biggest thing this week. Nice. I concur. I'm a sponge. So all this knowledge, it's, it's all brand new. Um, and I'm, I'm being selective with the knowledge that I acquire. You want to know, I, w- I want to say something else. Just say something else. Go ahead. With wrestling, <laughs> you drive a lot. Mm-hmm. Pack your food because when you go to the Virginia Welcome Station oh my and they're God. only open till West freaking West Virginia. West Virginia? West Virginia. Okay. I have huge hatred towards <laughs> this damn truck stop. It it's was a, it was it's a, a welcome, welcome center. <laughs> it's gigantic. And they close at nine PM. Could you say it's un- it's an unwelcome center? Very unwelcome. Very unwelcome. Hmm. I will never go back. <laughs> they lost the Savage Gentleman and Lady Frost's customers. <laughs> That's for damn sure. The Starbucks. Wait, the Starbucks. It was eight fifty-five, maybe eight fifty-five, and they shut the gate in our face. Oh. Yeah, but in our there face. was a sign. They said, "Well, I can serve you, but we don't have any Grande or Vente cups left. We don't have any milk. We don't have any something or other." So it was basically like you can get a very small cup of. You can get a coffee, shot of espresso or the most gigantic pot of <laughs> Java. I don't know. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was terrible. Burger King was closed. I don't even eat fast food. But if I wanted a Whopper, I couldn't get one. (laughs) It's tragic. I mean, it's hard times. Pack your food, people. Pack your food. There was a really good post. uh, We're getting way indie wrestling on this. It was a really good post by Bob Evans, speaking of. Mm. And it was like a lot of... Losing my voice. A lot of those road tips. Like, pack your food, do this. You know, um, make every dollar count. Make every dollar count and things like that. Mm-hmm. It was it, it, it's shared over at IndieWrestling.us, um, but it was like if you want to kind of look into the life of a pro wrestler on the you know on the indies, you know the self sufficient ones like trying to make it like that is a really good outline at least the way it should be, yeah. right? As right. you're as you're kind of building things up and everything like that. Um, Bob so. Evans is always dropping knowledge on us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Always, always, always helping and giving back to the wrestling world. Awesome. So go check that out. Um, what did I learn from wrestling this week? Um, I learned I learned that um, I, my worlds are colliding with technology and wrestling. 
uh, between the VR and this cool 3D effect kind of thing. Mm. Um, so anyway, it really is a little bit. Um, I, I'm curious because, I mean, we've seen other initiatives like this that kind of start small. Hey, we're going to do it a show here and there. And then they become like, you know, WBHD and stuff like that, right? Um, so I kind of wonder what that future holds for, for something like that. I remember the transition to the, the HD and there were concerns about how things were filmed and how certain things could be noticed that weren't before, mm-hmm. right? You know, be it from like when we went to HD, like makeup had to be done different. Yep. Yeah. Um, that was a, that was a general conversation about things around uh, HD um, conversions. And uh, now you have to go to something like a VR at one point. Jen Carlin's had the had the VR helmet on, and we're watching the revival versus the B team match, and she's it's got Dawson's hairy butt is in my face because <laughs> you know things awkward moments like that, right? And you know what is that going to be? What is that presentation? Do we get something? Do we end up with a 205 live WWE Network type show that's only in VR, maybe down the line? You know, and then how does that get presented? You know, you got in wrestling. You know, you've great got questions. This, you sell to the crowd, or you sell it to, to the to the camera. You know, how do you sell to 360 cameras? Right. So that that's kind of some questions, and it's, it's kind of interesting to see. Uh, remember, WWE is a media company, and they're going to be. Uh, looking into all sorts of medias and ways to present them as well. And I mean, geez, I mean, I say it time and again, like they do that weekly, two to three times weekly live program in any arena. And I've talked to people, you know, that do that as teardowns and all that stuff they do just to put on those three hours, two hours on Monday, Tuesday nights, mm-hmm. eight hours or whatever it is now on Sundays, uh, you know, and they get the most out of it. And it's uh, it's pretty crazy. So no more, no more SmackDown fist, no raw letters, etc. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> hey, you know what? Maybe with the 3D effects, they'll bring back the SmackDown fist because now they don't have to put it up. Right, and right? it can move too. And it so could it move. Blink, it, can go, it can like it can give you a fist bump in that little like Big Hero Six kind of move. It can get in your face. Like when Stone Cold comes out, it can just flick it off. Yeah, yeah, you can flip it off on those other shows. Um, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us on the show. The Savage Gentleman. Thanks for having us. And Lady Frost. Whoa, yes. Sword. I did not see oh, them. I don't think I do, No, I don't think the chat room is loading right for me. Oh, there it is. Alex Carr says that he learned that this week that Josh Alexander just got denied entry into the U.S. Yeah. to do a thing he loves and makes a living from. Did it happen again? Yeah, it happened again. Because it happened while he was Why? super indie champion. I don't know. It but happened yeah, to the fraternity. It did happen to the fraternity. That's right, it did. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, this, this is an ongoing thing. Again, um, uh, the card is going to change AIW's podcast. They talk about what happened with Sienna back in the day. Um, and then I think somebody else had an issue. And, and how they, like, I think they didn't they kick her out for like five years or something. Sure. Um, like something ridiculous like that, three, five years, something like that. I know Josh Alexander, he, when he came over initially, um, they, they, cause there was a big write up that he put up about it and it was, um, um, they discovered it. It was actually somebody that I think followed him on Facebook and was a fan. So he knew what he was coming over for at the border patrol. And he had to sign an agreement that said he would not come over to work wrestling for, I don't know, X amount of years or something like that. Wow. It's an issue. It's an issue. Um, wow. So I'm kind of curious uh, what the new development is, is from can, that. Can we keep the wrestling fans out of border control? Yes. Like, can we do that? Start sneaking them over. You know? Josh, jump in a trunk. I like this, I like this thing, so I'm going to ruin it for everybody. Yeah, right. Right. yeah, yeah. Like, really? What is Lays wrong it. with people? Let's start wrestling, wrestling without borders. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love across it. Across America and Canada. There yeah. you go, man. Why can't we just get along? Seriously, and I guess it's okay. Like you can go. It's not a problem to go to Canada. No, as a wrestler, it's coming back, which is weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Because it's, from my understanding, it's harder to go to Canada to work a job. Like if I wanted to do my job in Canada, that's tough. I've watched that Canadian Border Patrol show on Netflix. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, but we, we do, like, America does not want them to come in. I, I don't see any other. Are there any others hiding in there that I'm not seeing come up in the chat? Oh, it's in my messages. 
Sorry about that. Sometimes the uh, Facebook chat seems to be not loading appropriately. Oh, there we go. Uh, Ponder says Champa is greater than Thanos and don't move the screen at Sorgatron Studio until the sun goes down over the tacos. Yeah, we have a sun problem here. And <laughs> well, it's something he learned technically because we were watching wrestling at the time. Um, you'll, you'll get it if you're ever in the studio. So, Savage Gentleman, Lady Frost... Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for Where having us. Where can people us. find you online? Real Savage Gent on Twitter and the Real Savage Gentleman on Facebook and Instagram. I am Real Lady Frost across the board. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. And we also share Patreon for our tag team. Pretty Proper. It's patreon.com slash pretty proper. And we can shout you out for being a member. Uh, That's we right. Couple new ones we'll uh, we'll shout out this week, but if you're unfamiliar with Patreon, it's a way to help us out, get special content, and um, for as little as three dollars, you can help donate to our passion for wrestling. That's um, it, I mean, it's something that you know we always say at the end of Indie Mayhem show, support indie wrestling. You know, whether that be buying a show from a smart market, indiewrestling.us, or but this is a way buy their T-shirts and and like now you can. They don't even have to catch you at a show now. They can mm -hmm. support you in this way. Yes. And these guys are making the drive, making the miles. And if, if, if you know, every time you do buy a t-shirt or, or something like that, now a Patreon, that helps you guys out as well. And I think, I, I think this is another one. If uh, people haven't seen you in action, I believe you can probably search for you on the WWE Network by now, right? <laughs> in your oh, match man. against uh, against Oscar from uh, Cleveland a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's probably <laughs> under Jane Frost. Jamie Frost. Jamie Frost. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I love. How, how, how was Oscar? <laughs> like... Amazing, and uh, she kicked my head in. So, <laughs> <laughs> not sorry, too amazing. I should have warned you. Bobby is like Oscar's right. biggest fan yeah, on the oh, show man. here. <laughs> The mask here. Can prove it. Oh no! Oh, oh boy! Oh yeah! This is, oh, this is what uh, creeped out Chris Larusso. Oh my! Wait, wait! Do the pose. Do the pose. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I almost made Chris Larusso throw up. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably why he kicked the puppet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's an ongoing relationship. We have a rivalry. Me. Yes. Thank in, you. in my head. Probably not his. Bobby F. J. Town is making you can you can check out Bobby F. J. Town's creepy mask features uh, uh pictures over at <laughs> Bobby F. J. Town on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pup show coming soon to your town or Patreon. Yeah. Possibly. We're working on it. Possibly. Wait, wait. But, uh, Bob, what was it Bobby F. J. Town and his puppet friends? What was that? And, and and possibly coming soon a podcast. The five years in the making podcast from yeah. Bobby F J Town. Five. Laundry time. That's what I'm gonna call it. Laundry five time. Laundry time. Oh man, Bobby. I, every I time I go down to do laundry, I think of you. I don't even iron anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's you won't Bobby. Get that. Bobby, come on, I'm Bobby. Sorry. Riz, Riz plays games. Riz is going to be here in the studio this Thursday because there's some gaming going on. There is what? some gaming. That's right in there's, the studio. There's going to be, be there. there's going to be uh, the Brohemoths Super Smash Brothers Invitational. Ooh. Friends of the show mm -hmm. like uh, Honey Badger are going to be a part of it and uh, so many more. We have six wrestlers signed up for it. Uh, go check out the group. It will be live on Twitch on the IndieWrestling.us channel. Um, I think we're going to get two more announcements out here. Uh, I think we're looking to get uh, eight, eight competitors officially lined up. We had a couple of dropouts, so we're trying to get them filled in. Um, Sorg, are you and I going to be commentating that? We are going to be, yeah, we're going to be here. We're probably going to be commentating. Nice. I don't know. I just, I, we'll see. It might just be us, like, just letting them trash talk. We'll see, you know? Oh, no. There, yeah. Yeah, there's that. So uh, that'll be fun. And our friend at, friends at Mega the Cat Games have also contributed a few of uh, their things for us to kind of check out on the breaks in between rounds. Uh, so go check that out. That is, uh, I believe, 7 p.m. Eastern time on our Twitch channel, IndieWrestling.us, uh, too. And also keep an eye out. We just did a recent interview with Iceman Tony Johnson. will be coming up soon on the Indie Mayhem Show feed. Um, and we are uh, the 5th, I believe, of September, the first Wednesday in September. We're going to have the entirety of Team Storm. We'll be in the studio oh. for Indie Mayhem Show. 
that's gonna be it's gonna be it's if you gonna, haven't seen it's gonna be a thing so if you've gonna... seen you know what happens when just jackson argos comes in the studio it's usually a lot of yelling at me and a lot of canadian things yeah. decorating and the now, studio. They have, now they have a, they all have titles now they all have gold yawn the, uh, yawn. So you, might wanna, yawn. you might just want to give them a key and just leave. I might just, I mean, be self. It, you know, I just let him. It'll be like. Did just, you invite them? I, somebody did. So, um. Right. So, I mean, so the last time you were in the same building right. with them, they chanted you away. So they did. They did start a sort of go away it. chant at AWC. That that is a thing that happened uh, at intermission. Um. But um. We'll we'll see how that goes. It may just turn into like a table for three with them. So I don't know. Being Canadian, is that like table over poutine or something? I will figure it out. I don't know. Canadian um, bacon. Canadian no, it's still Tim Hortons. Yeah, yeah. It's just gonna be this place is just gonna just reek of Canadian bacon, maple syrup, and and and, t- and Tim bits. Tim bits under the couch. Or just I'll just find them for weeks. Table for trois. <laughs> yes, table for trois. Oh. oh, Bobby. Bobby's on our naming committee from now on. Thank you, everybody, in the chat room. It's been a great night. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check us out on the Facebook and everything. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.